Hi friends, my name is Steph. We've got Mark behind the camera. Hello. Hi Mark. We're here today at these beautiful ruins. I thought we could have a little wander. I could tell you a spooky story or two and we could learn about the history of this place and a couple of the hauntings that is said to occur here. Now we're also going to come back uh, at night time, see if, uh, I don't know, we can capture any spooky happenings, which is exciting. I'm really looking forward to that. Just a little disclaimer before I start. I'm not a historian. We're not paranormal investigators, anything like that. This is just for fun. You know, I love spooky locations and beautiful old ruins like this, and I thought it would be fun to take you along with me. Okay, so let's get started. So these are the ruins of Minster Lovell Hall which is in the village of Minster Lovell, uh, just outside of Whitney in Oxfordshire. The first ghostly story I'm going to tell you involves Francis, who was the ninth Baron Lovell. Now Francis, he fought in the War of the Roses. He uh, was on the side of Richard III and he was a Yorkist supporter. Unfortunately, Francis was on the losing team so he had to get out of there. He fled overseas and um, he stayed in hiding for a couple more years. He did um, fight in another battle in Ireland, which again, oh, he lost. Francis, he wasn't doing so great. So Francis, he eventually fled to Scotland, but there's no more information regarding the rest of his life, except for what local folklore tells us. Now they say that Francis actually came here for safety. He, he wasn't doing so well, you know, he kept choosing the wrong people to support and uh, his life was in danger. So Francis came here and he had a great idea. Now beneath the hall somewhere was a large, underground chamber, a secret room. Francis, he thought it'd be a good idea if he hid in this room and not just hide in it, if he was locked in this room. So he gave a trusted servant a key and he told this servant to keep him locked in this room. It's the best thing to do. Um, he would bring him food and water and check on him and just make sure that Francis was okay. <sighs> now, the not so great part of this plan was that the servant, he had the only key. <sighs> and of course, something happened to the servant and the servant died. Nobody, no one else knew where uh, Francis was. So he was trapped in this underground room, no way of escape, no access to food or water, and no one else knew that he was there. Like, Francis, was there not a spare key? Like, oh, really, was that a good idea to be locked in this room with no spare key, and no ax, you know, to break yourself out with? But unfortunately, Francis was trapped and he slowly starved to death. Now in uh, the early 1700s, they were actually building a new chimney here at the hall and the workmen, you know, just doing their thing, doing their building and they came across a secret underground room. They broke into the room and as they walked in, they saw a skeleton of a man slumped over a table. Uh, it is said that when they walked in, the skeleton was just so frail and brittle that it just fell to dust and blew away. 
Now I have read one version of this story where they actually found a little skeleton of a little dog curled up at Francis's feet. Oh, I hope that's not true because that makes me really sad. Oh, I mean, I'm sad that Francis starved to death, obviously, but the fact that a poor little dog might have slowly perished in there with him is no, no, makes me emotional. I'm, just, I'm so soppy when it comes to dogs. <laughs> Francis is said to haunt the ruins. He's said uh, to just wander the halls, wailing and weeping and making a whole bunch of noise. Some reports have actually stated that they've seen a ghostly knight riding through the ruins. Hmm, interesting. Now, do I believe this story? They say that it's actually very unlikely that this even happened. Uh, first of all, Francis never actually spent a lot of time here at Minster Lovell. And secondly, after the war, Henry Tudor, who was now king, he actually gifted this hall to his uncle. So not the best hiding place for a Yorkist rebel. Not somewhere he'd likely go to try and seek safety you know but even even with those uh, those points I don't know I re I want to believe it's true I really hope it's true you know <laughs> it's such a perfect story for these uh, these beautiful ruins you know and uh, I know that sounds really morbid though thinking about it uh, like yes I hope that there was a man trapped somewhere underground you know and yes I hope he did starve to death <laughs> the second ghostly tale that I'm going to tell you involves a William Lovell now he was here celebrating his marriage to his new bride they were having a grand old time partying, drinking, oh, it was fabulous. Now somebody suggested that, hey, maybe we play a game, a game of hide and seek. Fantastic, it's a big place, lot of cool places to hide, you know? So the bride, she goes off to hide. She came across a big chest and she thought, she thought, great, this chest, I can hide in this, no one's gonna find me. So she steps in, goes to close the lid, and somehow the chest actually locked once she closed the lid and locked with her trapped inside it. The other guests and William, they searched for her everywhere and they just couldn't find her for some reason and William was heartbroken. He was so upset, you know, this is his new, new wife and she'd gone missing and he didn't know what had happened to her and it said that he actually died of a broken heart. It's really sad. Now, the poor bride's body wouldn't actually be found for a couple more years and when the chest was opened, she was there still dressed in her bridal gown. It's actually William's ghost that can be heard here at the ruins and he's said to cry and moan and he's still searching for his missing bride. And that's a really, really sad story. That makes me feel so, oh, so upset for him. Poor William, but I do have a few questions. First of all, I'm assuming the chest wasn't soundproof. Um, I'm assuming she would have like shouted for help or screamed for help. I don't actually know where her chest uh, was. Some people say that it was in the attic. Some people say it was kind of where the food storage um, was, but still you think somebody would have gone around the whole hall 
and they would have heard her shouting. Um, so you think, was it deliberate? Did someone deliberately just leave her in the chest? Just say, mm, no, I don't hear anything in this room. Who knows? The mystery deepens. Those are two of the ghostly stories attached to Minster Level Hall ruins. Hmm, quite spooky, don't you think? Yes, so we're going to come back at night time. We're going to see if we can experience anything a little bit ghostly, see if we can hear any kind of sounds, even see anything. I would love that. Oh my gosh, I would love to see something. And uh, yes, I'm hoping it's going to be some good, spooky fun. So join us in the dark for some hopefully spooky times. Hi again. We are here, night time, in the dark. Mark is in front of the camera this time. Hello. Because I, I'm a scaredy cat um, and I didn't really want to be stood here on my own, you know, just in case. Didn't want any random <laughs> tapping on my shoulder from a ghosty. Ooh. So, yeah, <clears throat> we're just going to kind of stand around, you know, see if we experience anything. And um, yeah, it's really lovely here at night actually. It's really gorgeous, kind of seeing all the all the old old parts in the dark. Ooh. Okay, so if there's anybody here, ghosts, people, you know, you can stay away. No jumping out at us, please. Um, if there's any ghosts here. Please make yourself known. Hello. Hey, Francis. Francis. You here? William. Hello. I'm probably just annoying the ghosts if there are any here. So I'm like, oh my God, who is this woman? <laughs> He's pestering us. Can you feel anything? Cold. 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 Can you hear anything? You. Yeah. And I, owls. Owls. Yeah. If there's any ghosts here, tap Mark on the no. shoulder. No. <laughs> no. Blow on his face. No. Are you a believer? In a way. Okay. In the possibility. Yeah. Hmm. I 100% believe. Mm. I do believe some strange things though. Um, but yeah, totally 100% believe in ghosts and spirits. I've never had like a proper paranormal experience. Um, but you know, I've had little spooky moments. You kind of see things, hear things. So part of me thinks like, do I want to see anything? Not, I mean, I want to see something, but do I really want to see it? Or will it just like completely and utterly freak me out? See it from a distance. Yeah. Like if it was like a ghost dog. I think, right. I think I'd be okay with yeah. that. A ghost person flying at me. Why are they flying at you? Or they just well, walking Floating. Past? <laughs> or walking they might be, past. you know, they might like travel at speed. Maybe. How do we know? We don't do we? <laughs> There's lots of things we don't know. You know, ghosts might just fly like super duper fast for all we know. That's why nobody sees them. Yeah. There you go. Anybody there? That's pheasants having a fight if you can hear it. Or geese. A lot of pheasants. Oh, that's quite spooky. Come on, ghosties. Come on, Francis and Bill. <laughs> Willie <laughs> and Frank. Yeah. Come on, come say hi, we're friendly. Okay, if you don't want to show yourselves, 
maybe make a noise or like throw a stone at us a little one not at us past us yeah unless it's like a little pebble did you hear that creaking <laughs> the thing is I, mark's a lot more rational than i am um I'm totally like, oh, did you hear that? <laughs> I swear I heard a creaking. You heard a noise. It sounded like a creaking door. And there are no doors in this place. Only doorways. Oh. How long do you think um, that paranormal investigators normally investigate for? Hours. Mm. Yeah, see, that's the problem. I, I want something to happen, like, instantly. We've got 20 minutes. <laughs> Within a few minutes, like, come on! I don't want to wait. I'm kind of paranoid that something's going to, like, well, yeah, I don't walk out. We've got a lot of doorways behind yeah. us. Yeah. We should move to somewhere else where there are less doorways behind us. Yeah. That might be good, where we can kind of, like, scope out the area. Although, again, that makes no sense, though, because ghosts can travel through walls. So even if we were... Like in a room. They can travel here then. Th yeah. Save us the job moving. <laughs> so we've moved around uh, to this part of the hall. Oh. Um, <clears throat> so we're kind of, I think we're on, yeah, we're in the garden, but um, the outside of it looking, looking back at the ruins. And we'll see if, you know, Francis and William like hanging out out here. It's definitely a lot creepier out here. It's called nature. I know it is. <laughs> and normally I'm totally fine with that. But, um, you know, when I'm asking for the ghosts of Francis and William to come forward, all these little no noises are totally kind of freaking me out a little bit. It's like, this is really spooky. Well, nature, dog walkers, possibly perverts. <laughs> Is anybody there? You know, we're not professionals. We like to come out five minutes, come and say hello, and then we can go back inside, have a cup of tea, you know, in the warmth. Um, so if you could just kind of do some it now, that would be grand. Ooh, spooky. So we've been here about half an hour now. Sadly, we've not seen anything. Um, Bill and uh, Francis haven't decided to pay us a visit, sadly. Um, and we've not... Well, I heard that creak earlier. I swear I heard a creak. Um, so that's my one one little spooky thing I heard. Uh, and other than, you know, the random wildlife noises around here. How about you? And quite a pongy smell right now, oh, which yeah. is probably the river. Yeah, probably. Do you... Did you see anything? Did you hear anything? I saw nothing apart from possible dog oh, walkers. Yeah. Um, it was spooky. It was like, <laughs> but yeah, so sadly we, we haven't seen anything. Um, but, you know, we haven't got all the equipment. You know, all the fancy equipment that um, paranormal investigators normally use. So maybe they would have picked something up. I don't know. But it's been really cool. Uh, just hanging around here, um, a bit cold, I'm a bit chilly, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's sadly no, um, no paranormal sightings, but oh well, it's been really fun, so thank you for joining us on this adventure, um, I'm sorry we couldn't show you any ghostly activity, but join us again next time, uh, for the next a spooky, a spooky adventure, um, you know, whatever we decide to do. Oh, that's bright. Okay. Oh! <laughs> that's quite bright. <laughs> so, oh! Oh, and now we've got even spookier red light. Spooky. Hello. Ooh. Anyway. Time to go. I should say bye now. Before, oh my god. Before I, uh, I freeze. So, until next time, guys. Bye. Bye.